Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the IWC GST Alarm Reference 3537. You can see this 39.5 millimeter yellow gold GST Alarm on our website, purchased there. And if you enjoyed these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see our full listing for this watch, with additional accessories included, high resolution images, and naturally complete pricing details. On my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see that this classical late 90s IWC GST reference is a unique combination of the luxurious 18 karat yellow gold metal with a very traditional IWC tool watch dial and a fantastic Jejo Lecoultre alarm caliber inside. Now the watch is 39.5 millimeters across the round of the case. That's not including the crown for the alarm and for the time setting functions. The watch is reasonably thick but not overbearing. 13.5 millimeters in girth. It's actually slimmer than it appears on the wrist and it will fit easily under most tight sleeves and cuffs. Now from lug to lug there are a couple of different ways of measuring this watch but the most effective is to measure from the outermost rigid point. This link connecting the bracelet to the case on both flanks is a rigid outcropping that cannot be bent down any farther than you see here. So from the effective outermost point to its opposite number, the watch measures 51 millimeters across the wrist. The presence of so much yellow gold with dramatic finish and an exceptionally high ratio of dial to bezel allows this watch to read even larger than its nominal 39.5 millimeter size. And because it is so solidly constructed of bracelet, case, and buckle, all in yellow gold, it does feel immensely hefty on the wrist. Now the bracelet is the GST style introduced by IWC in the GST line in the late 90s. The very name GST standing for gold, steel, and titanium. Those were the three metals that were used in the model line. And you can see that the bracelet is a beautiful tapered piece with contrasting satin and polished finish. Now on the bottom side you can see two features that make it a standout. One, broad channels between links that allow it to avoid pinching skin or pulling hair. And then down the center of the intermediate links, you can see the dimples that allow each individual link, every single one, to be removed for the most precise sizing possible or alternatively for an exceptionally deep cleaning. Now the clasp itself is a sturdy piece that's beautifully finished. Now it does have single trigger deployment so it requires positive release, it can't just pop open, not friction fit, but you can see the gorgeous engine turning inside, a little perlage in its own right, just speaks to the attention to detail that IWC lavished on these watches. Now the dial of the watch is exceptional because it's such a throwback. The vintage style International Watch Co. logo, it seems more of a throwback to the 40s and 50s than the 1990s, but at this point there's quite a gulf of style and taste separating the IWC tool watches of that period to those of our period. Now you can see that vintage style logo spread across the watch from 11 to 1 o'clock and then beneath it a nice discreet IWC Schaffhausen marquee. You can also see that it's a simple and unadorned dial with a matte silver finish on both the rehaut and the dial base itself. Simple baton hands nicely loomed with applied yellow gold hour indices. It's important to note that this is part of the tritium series of this model. The model was built from 98 to 2003 and up until 2001 the dials were signed Swiss T at their base to signify tritium. And this one has a beautiful golden patina that's wonderfully consonant with the actual color of the gold of the watch itself. So it works beautifully, perhaps even more than when it was new. Now, again, 1998 to 2001, you had tritium dials. From 2001 to 2003, rough mid-year would be the demarcation point. You had the Luminova dials, and ever since, of course. Now, what's inside the watch is just as remarkable. It's known as IWC's caliber 917, but truth be told, it's a caliber from IWC's sister firm, first under Monisman, and then later under Richemont, Jezure Lecoult. You know it as the JLC caliber 918, a Memovox caliber caliber used from roughly 1994 to around 2007, 2008 when the Polaris debuted. It's a 4 hertz bi-directional winding automatic caliber with about 220 parts, 22 joules. It does not have hacking seconds or a conventional quick set, but you simply back the hour hand between approximately 10 p.m. and 12 a.m. back and forth to cycle the date. The 
architecture of the movement is a little vintage, stretching back to the first rotor Memovox calibers of 1969, that being the original 916. So it's a true heritage movement, but it is tank tough, so it has that going for it, as well as a 45-hour power reserve. This watch is a charming throwback in so many ways, mechanically to the old days of the JLC Memovox, and aesthetically to the days when IWC Again, even in spite of the full gold construction, was just a little bit more businesslike in the composition of its dials, its cases, the presentation of its watches, the size of its watches. This watch is a handsome throwback, but nevertheless, it is a living legend that you can enjoy today. See it, purchase it, love it on our website.